the other lesson, we talk about how ionic compound is always made of a cation, okay, and followed by an anion. And a cation again is a positive charges, which are consist of metals, monatomic ions, hydrogen that has lost an electron, ammonium or hydronium. Those are the common cations. Once you identify the cation, the rest of the chemicals formulas is basically your anions. And here are the common anions. It could be a non-metal monatomic ions, a hydrogen that has gained one electron, hydroxide, and sulfate, and a list of polyatomic ions that you need to remember. And again, let's review. We use parentheses, right? We use parentheses right here to group polyatomic ions when there are more than one. Because in this case, we are going to make ionic compounds from more given ions. That's the tricky part. You are making your own chemicals based on your understanding of ions. Then we have subscript. Again, subscript thing of subway, the number below the element symbols. And it indicates the number of atoms of specific element or the number of polyatomic ions that is grouped by parentheses. Now, let's look at an example. We have aluminum 3 plus and oxygen 2 minus. We know this one go first and this one go second because this is a negative ions. But wait a minute. What does this have to do with compound? One last thing you have to realize that all compound, I mean all compound, has to have a net charge of zero equal to zero. What does that mean? If you look at aluminum 3 plus and O2 minus, notice how this is positive and this one is negative. In order for it to be equal to zero, you have to balance the number of positive charge equal to the number of negative charge. And let me show you a shortcut to do this. All you have to do is put aluminum 3 plus right there, right? And O2 minus next together. And what you can do is you can crisscross the number. I said the number only, not the number and the charge, only the number of the charge. You crisscross it, okay? And you bring it down. That number will represent the number of each other atoms. In this case, I crisscross and bring down the two. That two will now represent the number of atoms of aluminum. So I have Al2. Then I crisscross this three, you can bring it down. Again, only the number, not the charge. That's why you don't see the negative there. And now that is going to represent three oxygens. So AlO3. Now let's prove it. Does it really work? We know that we have two aluminum. So Al3 plus and Al3 plus. That give us a total of six plus, right? Then oxygen, we know that each one has a minus two, O2 minus, and O2 minus, and give us a total of six minus, and this cancel out equal to zero. Therefore, we have ourselves a complete compound. Then over here, we have this phosphate right here, a polyatomic ions, right? Then we have a magnesium two plus. Now, which element is first? Of course, the cations always first going to back to this rule, first ion. So this one is your first one, and this one is your second one, okay? So let's rewrite it. So I'm going to have Mg2+, plus. then we have PO4, 3 minus. Now let's use our method, let's use our shortcut again. We're going to crisscross the number of the charges. In this case, that 3 is going to bring it down, it's going to represent the number of magnesium. So I'm going to have Mg3. Then that 2 right there, again, I do not bring down the negative, I only bring down the number of the charge. And that 2 is going to bring down over here. Now wait a minute, I have 2 of phosphate. If I were to bring that 2 right there, right? And I put a 2 right there as a subscript, just like I did to the 3. But when we write like that, we put PO4 and they put a 2 right there. That looked like there are 42 of oxygen. So that's the reason why we use parentheses. So we put a parentheses 
to group the polyatomic ions together. So now that I tell you there are two of phosphate versus before we have 42 of oxygen. So let's, let's prove it. Does it really work? We have magnesium right here, right? Which is two plus and we have three of it. So we have Mg two plus, Mg two plus and Mg two plus. That give us a total of six plus. Then we have phosphate, which each one is three minus. So we have PO4, three minus, PO4, three minus. And it give us a total of six. So this one cancel each other out equal to zero. Haha, <laughs> we're done with that part. Let's try the last one together. How about that? We have again, I try to trick you and put the negative ions first, followed by the positive ions. So of course we had to rewrite it. So this one's first, this one is second. So I'm gonna rewrite it. Na1 plus SO4 2 minus. And we're gonna use the same method again, crisscross. That two indicator is gonna be that two gonna be carrying down, and we have two Na, so Na2. But look at this, we have a plus. What is the number in front of a plus? It has to be one. The same thing when you see a negative signs only, it has to be a negative one. So since it's a one, we, we cross it and bring it down, telling you there is only one SO4. But when there's only one of the polyatomic ions, we don't have to use parentheses. Again, we only use parentheses to represent when there is more than one of that ion. So in this case, this is our answer. And do you want to prove it? Let's prove it. Na is one plus, so we have two, but Na plus, Na plus, that give you two plus. Then we have sulfate, which is SO4, two minus. So it's gonna cancel out. And that give us a neutral compound of zero. Uh -huh. And that's how you make compound out of any given positive ion or negative ion. Let's get.